My dad grew up on a farm near Stetler, Alberta, and so my brother and I would spend our summers up there. We go to the family brandings every May long weekend, take photos of them, and yeah, I just I I just love it. It's to me, it's a way. It's a stress reliever. It's a way for me to get away from the city and the daily life and and take photos of just beautiful countryside and amazing people. Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Evelyn from The Camera Store and I'm here today with international award-winning photojournalist Leah Hennel. Thanks so much for being here today with us. So what is it that you do exactly? What is photojournalism? So photojournalism is truthful storytelling, capturing real moments using photography or video. But yeah, it's just real moments, documenting real moments. Yeah, and what is it that got you into photojournalism? So when I was younger, my mom had gotten my brother and I a subscription to National Geographic. And like most young kids, we would read all these amazing stories and look at these just amazing photos from all over the world. And I think I was just kind of hooked because my math marks weren't that great. So <laughs> I knew that I needed to find a career where I didn't have to do math. Yeah, and what was the path that got you there? So in high school, I did this work experience course. I think I was about 16 mm -hmm. in grade 10, grade 11. And it was a work experience course at the Calgary Sun in their photo department. So back then I developed their film. I made prints, worked in the dark room. Um, I met a lot of my mentors now, like Mike Drew, and I just learned from there. And then I took a SAIT photojournalism course and I graduated in 98 while still working at The Sun. And then in 2000, I went to the Herald and I had a, the graveyard shift, 11 at night till 7 a.m. Yeah, so what would you do during the graveyard shift? How did you get photos out of that? So again, we'd, I'd cover breaking news where we had a police scanner and if there was a house fire, we would go to that, or I would go to that, sorry. And then I did a story on the Blackfoot Diner because it was open 24 seven. I would just hang out with the people there and get to know them. And then I did, I just tried to find anybody who was working the same shift as me, you know, in, in different careers and I would document them. I'm sure it wasn't always easy um, being a photojournalist. I know you had a young son when you started your career through some of the more challenging parts, um, you know, working late, working long hours, and putting tons of time into it. So how are you able to do that? Yeah, so it's hard. I think it, well, I know it's hard for any parent in it who's working a job full time. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, you know, you're constantly feeling guilty that you're missing out on spending time with your child and you're yeah. missing spending time doing the projects you want to do. So I had a lot of help when I first started, when I was at the Herald and I had my son, I was a single mom for three years. And I got to a point where I thought I just couldn't do this anymore. I couldn't work the shift work. I couldn't, I just, I couldn't do it. I just was at that place like, where I, I don't a know. normal job. <laughs> yeah, or I don't even, I just was at a bad place. My mom had passed away and then I have this son and um, a lot of my colleagues helped me out with whether it was childcare or they just said, Leah, we'll help you. Like, you know, you need to keep doing this and this is your passion. And, and my dad helped me out a lot. If it wasn't for my dad, I honestly wouldn't have been able to do this job because yeah. he would watch Hunter when I worked the night shift and, you know, the weekends or, you know, breaking news happens and I had to go to Medicine Hat for a week and, you know, he would, You're yeah, down. yeah. So that helped. And, you know, it just got progressively easier. <laughs> the older my son, my son's 14 now, so. With Hunter, have you been able to incorporate him into your work at all? Like, does he like to come along? I don't know if he likes to, but he's made to. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, no, he does come along. I take him because I do a lot of my own personal projects and documentaries outside of my work at the newspaper. And one time I took him to a beekeeper because I wanted him to see where honey came from. And I was doing this documentary on them. And he came and he liked it, I think, until he got stung. And uh, I think he was about six. So now he's terrified oh, yeah. of bees. <laughs> <laughs> So what is it about Western photography that keeps you coming back for more? You know, I think I've always wanted to, well, I know I've always wanted to be a rancher, <laughs> but I can't, so I live vicariously through them. But, you know, it started from a really young age. My dad grew up on a farm, uh, central Alberta, St Stetler, Alberta, and we would go with my dad and my mom and my brother. We'd hop in the car from Calgary and we'd go for brandings up at the Hennel family farm every May long weekend 
And just from there, I just got so attached to this lifestyle, this getting out in the country and just being with really good people and just, it was just amazing. It's, I always say on the weekends, everyone drives to the mountains and I drive to the prairies. It's the wildlife, the scenery, there's so much in the prairies. Yeah, we're not just good for our mountains. No. <laughs> and then going to like the Hutterite colonies, I've always been interested in that, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's a different culture and they're yeah, just whole lovely, different whole different world. And it's like stepping back in time. Now you have quite an amazing collection of Western photographs of people and places, um, so much so that you've actually put together a collection called Along the Western Front. So what can we expect to see in that new title? So there'll be a lot of like cowboys, cowgirl portraits, a lot of um, daily life on the ranch, brandings, cattle drives, um, a lot of the Hutterite colonies in southern Alberta, some of their photos in there from brandings again. and. You photographed so many different challenging subjects and you know, a range from sport photography to fashion to food to breaking news. What have been some of the more difficult things that you've had to photograph? I think recently, about a couple years ago, myself and a writer, Christina Frangu, we did a story on doctor assisted death, doctor assisted dying, and we photographed Paul. And I met Paul at 9.30 in the morning and he died at just after three, I believe. And that was hard, because I didn't know Paul, and he wanted us there. He wanted us to document his last hours. And so to be in the room when someone takes their last breath is, it's, I can't really describe it, it's really powerful. You know, my mom, she died in 2004 from cancer, and you know, I watched her slowly fade away. Um, my brother was about a year and a half ago from a heart attack at 40. So I feel like, yeah, you know, I think my personal experience has maybe helped me understand what other people are going through and what they need. And maybe what they need, but it, I mean, it's always, it's so different for everybody. But in terms of the emotional side, I mean, you know, with Paul, it was, you know, my, my friend Christina and I both had a lot have personal experiences and, you know, we were both crying in the room. You know, I had my camera and tears are running down my face. Um, I don't stop being human just because I want to get a photo. Yeah. Um, you know, and another one was Barbie Harris. I met her, you know, at the on the streets and asked her if I could do a documentary on her and just see how she lives. And I was interested in the women's side of being on the streets and being homeless. Right. And she was amazing and she let me tag along with her. You know, I, for a year, I would try and get to see her in between assignments and wherever she was. And we became friends and she got cancer in that year and ended up dying. And so I was there for that. I met her family, you know, her social worker. It was hard, you know. Um, I also think that when I'm documenting and doing stories on stuff like death, I want to show who that person was. And I, you know, it's a privilege when someone lets you document them like that. And I go out for drives all the time and I meet all these people on the ranches and it's, it's therapy for me because it helps me get over, you know, some of the harder stuff that I cover. Um, when my brother died, I have a, one of my ranching friends invited me to come out to one of their brandings you know, and it helps and... And I can tell that this isn't just a job for you. I mean, you do a lot of stuff on your shift, but then you keep working and you can tell that it's really fun for you. You know, it's, it's my passion. Um, I'll never stop being a photographer. I'll have to pry the camera from my gold dead hands, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's my passion. It's not just a job. Like I've, it sounds cheesy, but I really love what I do, and I really love meeting people and learning about different cultures, and I love history, and I just think it's amazing. It's amazing. When I look back and what I've done in my career, I mean, it's amazing all the places that I've been to and people I've met and friends I've made along the way. I think that's the biggest thing is I feel like I have, you know, I've lost a lot of family members, but I feel like I've gained a lot of new family members, if that makes sense.